video game. Did you even know that? I didn't. I wish I didn't now. And it sucks. Oh my god, it sucks so hard. You know, you know what the worst part is? I knew long before I even put this in the machine that it was gonna suck. It's got like, it's got all the warning signs. Just look at this thing. You couldn't have made this game any less appealing if you covered it in dead plague rats and set it on fire. Although, trust me, that would be a good start. Okay, first off, it's based on the Highlander cartoons, which of course have almost nothing to do with the movies, and in fact take a great many pains to betray many of the fundamental aspects of the series. So you'd better be a fan of the cartoons, because if you liked the movies and thought this would be a good game to pick up, get ready to be left in the dust. In ancient times... Seven centuries have passed since the Earth plunged into darkness. Uh, why? Seven centuries since the Jetitor swore to regain for man his lost knowledge and freedom. Okay, who are the Jetitor? All the immortals took the oath. All, except one, who dominates the world. What oath? Who's that? None of this matches anything I've ever seen in the movies! Alright, most of these questions are answered in the series if you're willing to suffer through it. The cartoon is set in the post-apocalyptic future, and really, I don't know what it is about Highlander that makes people think it'd be a perfect setting for after the bombs fall and wipe out all life on the Earth. Anyway, that's what happens. An asteroid hits the Earth and sets off all the world's nuclear bombs. And 700 years later, people ride tauntauns and have fruity rope rituals at Stonehenge. Apparently, all the remaining immortals decided that fighting over power was stupid when confronted with their responsibility to rebuild the human race. So they took an oath of non-violence to forget about the game. But as soon as they all took the oath, they're betrayed by Cortan, who had his fingers crossed the whole time. I refuse to take this ridiculous pledge. What? Oh, damn it! And he looked like such a trustworthy guy! That's pretty naive of the immortals to just assume everyone everywhere would just throw down their swords forever and not have a contingency plan in case one of them was, you know, lying and secretly planning to take over the world. No one to battle with me. I declare myself the last immortal and claim the prize. Supreme knowledge and absolute power. Wait, I didn't know we could do that. Can he just claim the prize? I didn't know we could do that. Can he do that? You have no right, Cortan. You are not the last. Okay, hold it. Wait, 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 wait. What the fuck is up with this guy? I mean, with the lips and the... Is this guy in blackface or what? Is this serious? This is the most racist thing I've seen in animation since... Yeah, okay, never mind. Hang on a second, I gotta find out who made this. Oh, I see, it's a French-Canadian company. See, you gotta remember, most Canadians have never even seen a black person before. Because black people are smart enough to live somewhere warm, where we play real sports. hey oh! Alright, where was I? Why does this guy look like Jessica Biel? And why is he wearing a cape and wrestling tights? And, wait, Ramirez is in this? Well, apparently, which seems to indicate this is in continuity with the rest of the movies, but don't ask me how, since Ramirez dies every time he makes an appearance. And I'm serious, this is somehow in continuity because Connor McCloud from the first movie is in the show. He's the only guy with the balls to break his oath and attack Cortan, and, well, he basically gets his ass kicked and killed in one episode. This time, McCloud, I really will be the last. You may have beaten me. But be warned, Cortan. You talk funny, Nash. Where are you from? Lots of different places. Uh, yeah, do any of those places include Scotland? Because it sure as hell doesn't sound like it! So, you know, way to piss on the few familiar things fans might actually recognize. But soon an immortal will come to confront him. His name 
is Quentin McLeod. He is the Highlander. Is every fucking McLeod throughout history an immortal? I guess that's the problem when you call your series Highlander. Your hero always has to be a Scotsman. Unless you're making a spin-off show with Amanda called The Raven. God, that sucked. I guess people just like saying McLeod. McLeod. You cannot die, McLeod. I am Connor McLeod of the Clan McLeod. McLeod! The Cloud! Anyway, the biggest kiss of death on this game is that you can only play it on the Atari Jaguar CD. You remember that piece of shit console that looks like a toilet and doesn't work? Yeah, that one. You remember the nerds repeated and ultimately failed struggle to get two of them to work, even employing the smartest electronics expert he knows to no avail? And surprisingly, the one I bought didn't work either. But I have a secret weapon that even the nerd doesn't have. I know a guy who's smarter than anyone. How's it going down there? This abomination is a piece of crap! I got it to work. Barely. But the thing about the Jaguar CD is that not only is it prone to hardware failures, it's prone to about five different ways it can fail. It can fail if the CD device isn't perfectly set on the machine. It can fail if the contacts aren't clean. It can fail if the memory check cart isn't perfectly set. And it can easily fail because the laser itself or the motor mechanism are defective, and they often are. And in this case, it would often fail because the lid is so poorly designed that when closed, it actually closes too tightly and mashes the CD against the inside of the drive, preventing it from spinning, and that can easily cause additional internal damage. And of course the video quality is shit. The only output option on the Jaguar is this stupid RF antenna switch box which produces this horrible wobbly signal, and this in an age when even the Super Nintendo had RCA cables. And even when I did get it to work, the Jaguar still froze all the time, and I do mean all the damn time. I mean, why is there a 10-digit keypad on the controllers? Why are there handles on the cartridges? I've never worked so hard to get something this broken to function. I could be playing house right now! And as a final epitaph to that story after spending three days getting the thing to work, no sooner had I finished getting footage for this review than the motor on the CD drive completely crapped out. My Jaguar CD is now, well and truly forever, dead. Okay, so basically this game is just the first episode of the series. Cortan already rules the world and has Iggy Pop hanging around his palace as some kind of weird sex gimp. <laughs> Cortan's straight up thuggin' right now just because he can, and he needs people to work in his underground obedience domes or something. And he sends his stormtroopers in their tanks, yes, tanks, to Scotland because, uh, Scottish people work hard? Where are we hunting today, Major Iraq? The Highlands, man. The Highlands. Major, that's where the Dundees... Silence! Cortan's orders. Eternal power to Cortan. Eternal power to Cortan. Yeah, hail Cortan, whatever. I gotta tell you, this geography doesn't really look like Scotland much. I don't remember any huge deserts and massive canyons in Scotland. Oh, well, I guess the meteor and the nuclear bombs did all that. My bad. Anyway, the cyber super macho man and his men sacked the village, killing Quentin's mom. With her last breath, she tells Quentin that he's not a Dundee, but a MacLeod, which is, um, important? You must face them, Quentin MacLeod. Yes, my completely unarmed son. Go and face that armored division and tear their tanks asunder with your bare fucking hands! MacLeod, why are you calling me that? Because that's your true name. Obey your mother, boy! Come here and fight! Aw, oh, gee, thanks, Mom. Thanks for telling me I'm not a Dundee anymore. If I were a Dundee, I'd be able to say, That's not a knife. That's a knife. Now I'm screwed. The lesson's finished, child. Why did you call me McLeod? No! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were being serious. So go ahead and do it again. No! 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 I'm serious, I didn't edit that. That's really what happens. And then we cut to Ramirez somewhere. At last! 700 years waiting for this moment. Quite a long time, I have to say. Why is it that none of the Scottish Highlanders in this show even attempt a Scottish accent, except for Ramirez, who's supposed to be Spanish? I'm not Spanish, I'm Egyptian. Duh. Then the game starts, and how do I describe this? 
I don't know if it's exactly fair to pick on the graphics, but suffice to say they don't look good. And the characters are ugly, blocky arrangements of polygons that present a jarring, inappropriate contrast to the rest of the game. In terms of graphics and gameplay, it's probably most accurate to say it looks like a precursor to the PC game Alone in the Dark, even though that game came out at least two years before this one, and somehow looks better and plays much more smoothly. What's weird is that in some cases, the pre-rendered cutscenes look worse than the in-game graphics. Not really sure how you do that. You start off without a sword, forcing you to fight the armed guards with your bare hands, and this goes about as well as you'd expect at first. You've got three attacks, a looping uppercut that will never fucking hit, and apparently Quentin is a big fan of the Karate Kid because your other two attacks are the crane kick and a leg sweep. Sweeping the leg is the only thing that will hit, by the way, because it's the only attack with any range to it. Although at one point I encountered a guard who's apparently more immortal than Quentin is because I hit him about 20 times straight in the shins and he didn't fall down. You get the sword basically by wandering around and finding it by accident, but first you have to break open the gate with a wooden stick. Actually, a specific wooden stick you find in a hut, not just any stick you could pick up from anywhere. And of course, you can't use the stick as a weapon. It's only used to break open the padlock because apparently wooden sticks are stronger than steel chains. Except it won't open an identical lock on a treasure chest inside the village, which of course the stick doesn't work on. For that one, you need a crowbar. A little consistency here, people. It's all I'm asking for. Anyway, you go to Stonehenge for no real reason and find Ramirez there, and he gives you the Sword of the McClouds. Do you know your name, child? I am Quentin McCloud, and I am not a child! I am Ramirez. I'm a jetator. A jetator? Actually, he sticks it in the ground and just vanishes. It, wh where'd the sword go? Seriously, where is it? It was right in front of me just a second ago. Where the fuck? Oh, there it is. Obviously. Jesus, this game. And why is the sword yellow? What fucking sword is yellow? How do you fuck the color of a sword up? Strangely, the sword doesn't even seem to do any more damage to enemies than your bare hands. It took me three to four hits to down a guard while unarmed, and with the sword, it took about three to four hits. It's weird. Like before, you've got several attacks with the sword, but the only one worth using is the lunge, because again, it's the only attack with any range. There's a leaping overhead strike, but you never want to use that one, because if you're even slightly off-center, you'll overshoot your target, and you'll never turn around in time. What's funny is that all the guards are taller than you, and as a result, your lunge always seems targeted straight at their balls. Ooh! Oh man, Quentin McCloud fights dirty. It's cold as ice. So you run around all over Scotland, mercilessly thwacking dozens of people in the nuts, which is what I imagine most Scottish people do all day anyway, and once you figure this tactic out, the game becomes almost astonishingly easy. I say almost because even though I just told you how to win almost every fight, you're still gonna die constantly playing this piece of shit because the controls in this game are absolutely crippled. Your character moves like he's wading in hip-deep mud. Just trying to turn around in place takes about four seconds, and in weird, lurching 90-degree turns. The controls are so bad that it's virtually impossible to just walk directly ahead in a straight line. You spend most of the game running and swaying drunkenly to either side as you try to correct your movement. And good fucking luck when the game actually expects you to have some precision in walking across narrow platforms, or God help you, jumping gaps. I guess Quentin does drink a lot. It's the only way to recover your health. Yeah, you drink Highlander beer to restore your health. You don't regenerate at all over time. But what makes the bad controls even worse is the camera. It must be working for Corten because it wants you to die. This is fucking ridiculous. I will never understand why games like this feel the need to completely invert your orientation two to three times simply crossing a room. I just want to get to the... Oh, oh, ah! What is with this? Sometimes the change is so radical I can't even tell where I was coming from or where I was going. Where the fuck am I now? I have no landmarks. I have no frame of reference. Someone help me! always fun when you can't see your enemy because he's hitting you from off-camera, or when your view is completely obstructed by an object in the foreground. 
Where it gets really bad is when you get hit, you recoil backwards in pain, and oftentimes you can get caught in between camera angles, and the game starts to struggle to decide which camera to use, so it just ends up using both. You can also get knocked out of the room entirely, which happens way more often than you'd think. And the guards are completely powerless to pursue you outside. They just wait at the doorway until you come back in. The combat just sucks. Aiming is impossible. The hit detection is almost non-existent. You miss shots that should be certain hits, and you hit with shots that come nowhere close. Where you'll die most often is when you get caught with a shot, causing you to enter a 4 second damage animation where you stumble backwards. But the problem is, you can be hit while in this animation, so once you get hit, the guard will just keep hitting you until you die. It's unstoppable. The only weapon that's worth a damn in this game is the rubber chicken. Yeah, a rubber chicken. It's got great range and it kills in two hits. Eventually you'll just accidentally wander into a desert in the middle of Scotland. Quite an abrupt shift from the rolling greens of Scotland to fucking Tatooine, isn't it? Anyway, this is where the game gets really monotonous. You're gonna wander around this desert for hours, wondering where you're supposed to be going and what you're supposed to be doing. And getting lost, of course, because all the screens look alike. Combine that with the fact there's absolutely no music in this game until the later levels. And even then, I refuse to call a two second loop music. <laughs> In this stage, all you'll ever hear is the same stupid sound of blowing wind on a constant, endless loop. It doesn't even sound like real wind, it just sounds like some asshole blowing in your ear and going <sighs> Sandstorm! <gasps> Sandstorm. It's all part of a new program we like to call Deep Hurting. Deep Hurting. But the worst part of this stage is the fucking snipers. There's at least two of them, at least two that I could see, but the camera's so bad it's impossible to tell. I have no idea where I'm getting shot from, and there's no way to dodge. Come on, I just gotta get to the. Ugh. See, you're gonna get hit, and there's no way to fight back. Even though I can see them, the snipers are up on rocks, so I'll never be able to get rid of them. Try anything you want, it won't work. Serpentine shell! Serpentine! Honestly, why am I even worried about guys with guns? I've seen movies where immortals can shrug off getting shot like a hundred times. 108. 112, my shell. Good. And then there's the sewer level, because there always is. And it sucks too. And this is where I almost just gave up and broke the fucking controller over my knee, because there's this puzzle when you're confronted with a giant spitting sewer shit fan. Because in the sewer, your shit needs to be chopped up with a giant fan. But no matter what you do, you just can't get through it. You can beat yourself up forever trying to jump through the fan, and it looks like you can, but you won't. You know how to get through it? Well, <laughs> you'll never guess. You use a stopwatch. I'm not even kidding. This is the only clue you're given. Nothing can stop this grinder. But every four seconds, when the blades are opposite to each other, if you move fast enough, you can make it to the other side. So, you know, clearly you're just supposed to infer that you have to use a stopwatch to time the fan blades. What? We don't even see him use the stopwatch in the video sequence. He just jumps through it on his own. These puzzles make no sense. Why can't I just get Ramirez down here to stop the fan blade himself? We all know how good he is at that. Then there's the door out, which is a guard checkpoint. Go away. Wait, go away? That's it? Corton's given orders to kill me on sight. This guy sees me standing with a dripping katana over two of his dead buddies, and all he has to say is, Go away! Go away! The only way through is to be wearing a guard's uniform, so I really hope you got the crowbar and ran all the way back to the village to open the chest to get it, because now you have to. Why is there a guard uniform and a locked chest in the Dundee village? Why would they have that? Why can't you just take a uniform off a dead guard? And why wouldn't you wear it all the time if the guard just waves you through without a second look? And why- Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck is he- Why would he take the uniform off? Why would he ever take the uniform off? This guy disrobes faster than a male stripper! What an asshole! 
Just wait until the last stage, where there's even more snipers who can shoot you no matter where you are. Your only chance is to save the game as often as possible in as many places as possible, because this game is going to screw you hard and often. But even the save function is poorly implemented, since there's no visible option to save anywhere. You just have to know to pause and push C. It works like a save state, but every time you reload your game, it unequips your sword, and you have to go into your inventory to equip it again. Why would I not want to have my sword equipped? But even equipping the sword is a torturous experience because the inventory is so fucking inconvenient. You have to go through every single item in your inventory, most of which are useless just to get to it. So after crossing the 400 yard long bridge with snipers all over it, you enter a big round room where you fight two more guys. And then you win. Really, you just open the door and there's the Dundees. You win. Yeah, there's no boss in this game. The entire show is based on there being a boss. What a ripoff! You never actually fight Cortan, you just see the racist stereotype guy fight him. The whole game was setting up a confrontation and instead it's just two more anonymous dorks. The only dorks in the entire game you'll ever fight, by the way. There's only one enemy in the entire game and I'm not counting the snipers that you can't fight. One enemy. I can't even fight Iggy Pop, nothing? So basically this is a Highlander game where nobody's actually Scottish, the sword fighting sucks, you're not immortal, there's no decapitations, no quickenings, and basically no villain. But what's really depressing about this is, I really did this to myself. Nobody played this fucking game. Nobody could. It was on the Atari Jaguar fucking CD. Nobody could get that thing to work. It was a giant colossal piece of shit. You! Hey, you! What? Why did you have to get this thing working? You could have just lied. You could have spared me this pain. At least the nerd had the good sense to give up. Oh, pff, the nerd. Don't hate me because I'm awesome at science. Oh, uh, why do they have to keep doing this to Highlander? The first movie was so good and they just keep fucking it up. This game is balls, man. And there's an even older game for the ZX Spectrum. No. Oh, that reminds me. Did you ever see the trailer for the new game on the Highlander the Source DVD? No. I mean... No. Does it look good? Oh yeah, it looked great, but the game was cancelled. No! Wait, we own Highlander the Source? <laughs> no! He'll be back. They always come back. Oh my god, what's wrong with your face?